even though statistically we're over 1 billion strong and growing, right? Wow. So you really can't sit there and say, well, it's just a small group. No, it isn't. Wow. And it's one of the demographics that everyone, basically everyone that lives long enough or has an accident, an incident or medical diagnosis, they enter into this demographic. And guess what? We welcome you because why? It is a we conversation. Inclusive spaces is for all of us. Access is a human right. And so it allows us now to truly live in an inclusive space, to truly understand what our lived experiences are and to take it now from children, infants, toddlers, to not sell them that because they live with a disability, they can't have a future. There's no universities for you. There's no career development, no leadership qualities. You have all of those things. And if you missed it through educational wise, if you missed it through community and social involvement, if you get into a sport, you will catch up very fast because your coaches, the, the persons who are sponsoring equipment, the companies that are designing innovative things for their athletes to use, they're looking for you yeah. and they need for you to show up. And so it allows parents who have had the mindset that I just want to protect the world is cruel. We know, mm -hmm. we know it's cruel. Yeah. We also know that we have to teach each human being how to not only live independently, but how to be advocates, how to amplify their voices, how to understand their rights and how they, when it's not so, when there is no access to show up authentically and say, well, hi, I'm Erin Brown. I love paratriathlons, which means I swim, I cycle and I run. I know it's crazy. Persons think that I'm insane, but all athletes are insane. Do you know what we put ourselves through <laughs> in order to compete? So don't worry about that part. What I need, though, is to be able to not only have inclusive training and development, but also the equipment that I'm going to need. My coaches, they're going to need to know exactly how can I integrate my current, my current fitness strategies for this athlete? Because why? the Paralympics, the Special Olympics, and the Olympics is available to you. So why not? Cheer me on, wave that flag, and let's get going. Yes. I love how you're putting a parallel to individuals who have been injured. Yeah. Because I've been injured and I've never even thought of that the reason that I was able to get around is because of individuals like you who are fighting. Mm. Yes. Well, there was, cool. there was one time um, I broke my leg in October, 2020. I've never broken anything before. So it was like mm -hmm. totally a brand new experience for me, but it literally like snapped in half, like just fell off my leg. And you know, for what it was, mm -hmm. the experience was fine. You know, it was a, it was a very good learning experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I went through all of the stages of all of the things that people go through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, shopping, the little, the little um, wheelchair thing, at like the Target or Walmart or whatever that you get to go in and the battery not being fully charged. Ooh. Or it like stopping in the middle of the store and then like, how do you yeah, get what back do you do? to your car? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I only had to deal with that for, you know, maybe six months. Yeah. And there was a couple of things. Yeah. So I can't, I can imagine the frustration that could occur yeah. if this is a lifelong thing yes. and this is something that's popping up when mm -hmm. you're in a hurry or a rush, or you're just trying to run in and do something very quickly or whatever, you know, the array of things that mm -hmm. individuals deal with yeah. um, that would just add that extra layer of frustration. Um, Thank yeah. You so so thank you. Yeah. First of all, thank you for doing it. And, and second of all, thank you for like helping me even recognize that mm -hmm. I didn't even like think of that. 
Yeah. Um, that that those are your community is probably mm-hmm. the community who's getting it so that when someone like us breaks our leg and we have to use it for a couple of months, get to use it. And that is why I thank you for sharing that because it's a we conversation for very long. We've been taught it's a separate and apart conversation when it's actually good business sense. It's actually good sustainable sense. It speaks to innovation and creativity. And so what I want to add to that is that here's one of the analogies I love to share with persons for them to understand what access truly gives a person. So When you're experiencing a temporary disability, and for most of the non-disabled persons, when they experience a temporary disability, they broke a leg, they have to use a pair of crutches, um, they may have to use a wheelchair, a walker, whatever it is, right? For most of those persons, they're working. And while they're working, they are able to take time off from work because it's built in. If you have sick days or if you happen to have insurance, your insurance cover a few things. You're able to purchase a pair of crutches. It comes with a prescription. They write it on a pod and you magically give it to someone and you get it. And so therefore you have an adaptive equipment. And it's only for a period of time. You then are referred to a physiotherapist or or a specialist that then look at it a bit deeper to make sure that you're doing all of the things that you need. All of that speaks to access, that majority of the time, a person living with a disability do not have access to. Wow. There are no programs for that. There are no, there are no easy referral processes, inclusive referral processes, or even showing up to a doctor's office or an emergency space and you are deaf and you need sign language interpretation because that's the only language that you know and nobody there has it nobody there knows it there's nobody to call and so you're now sitting there looking at them looking at you looking at them right and you're like okay so what are we going to do but those moments even of the temporary experience of being able to gain certain access, right? And then you show up in public spaces. There's no electric chairs or the chairs, like you say, are either dead or it dies in between you getting around. Yeah. You're pulling up, yeah, you're pulling up to a, a access parking space or we also refer to it as a disabled parking space, which should be at the entrance because it's the safest and the shortest space to get into a facility, a space, a building. And you're recognizing that persons are already parking there. They don't have a decal. And now you have to find somewhere else to park. Or you can be feisty like me and I just pull behind you. (laughs) I just pull behind you and then I go inside. And then um, if I'm feeling really, really nice that day, I go to the customer service place and I said, please allow, let that person know that um, when I'm done shopping, I will be right out right? Um, Because it's all a teachable moment and it's all to make you aware that what you thought was a quick shop, a quick experience of running in and getting something quick, oh, I'm just going to be two minutes because you hear that a lot, actually um, removed access for a person that needed to be parked closest to the entrance to safely enter a space in order for them to complete what they need done, right? Yeah. So, When you start to get into those public spaces, I think that's when persons with temporary disabilities kind of get a glimpse of what persons living with long-term or permanent disabilities, chronic illnesses as well, or the aged or senior citizens experience every day. And those are the factors that we look at. Is it raining? Am I going to get a cart? Is the parking space going to be taken? I don't think I'm going to go out today. And so we talk ourselves out of being active participants because we understand that these are the things that nobody else necessarily thinks about. Yes. When I had my leg, I would not go out in the rain. But you can't do that. Floor, Sabrina. Nobody likes the floor. (laughs) Yeah, but if you're if you're uh, and it, you can't just stay in your house for the rest of your life. No, you can't. Yet persons are doing it and their support systems are encouraging it. And that's because their experiences, I don't want you to go out there and have to demand it. 
fight for it, things that should be already put in place. And so there are persons like me who acquired a disability at the age of 23 due to bone cancer, I had to have my left leg above the knee removed. So for me, I lived life with some access, with all of the access, you know, it wasn't even spoken about, it just was, right? Yeah. And then when my leg was removed, my access instantly, while I was still in the hospital, coming up from anesthesia, not knowing what was gonna happen, it was removed. Wow. And I recognized that when I then had to leave the hospital and I'm going, okay, so what do I do now? And my family is bawling, crying because I'm now living as a limb difference individual. And I'm like, um, <laughs> but I still have my expertise, knowledge. I still have, I'm passionate about things. I still have goals. I'm still an athlete, like a leg, does not, and I will not allow it to define my existence that. on an yeah. earth that is all about innovation, right? Yeah. Yet that is not the average conversation. That is not the average mindset. And I continue to go through, and I've been through so much that I have intentionally said to myself, Aaron, you're going to show up, whether it is in the Bahamas whether it is in another country, whether it is in another region, whether they don't speak a lick of English, you're gonna show up. Yeah. And I do that intentionally because I understand I acquired a disability. There are persons who were born with a disability who has been sold the lie that their life cannot be fulfilled, their life cannot thrive. There is no success and disability. We need to normalize that.